Hello and welcome to another video by New York Stilo and today we're going to discuss how to deal with cyanobacteria and what you're looking at here is cyanobacteria it's actually growing on the uh, hang on the back refugium on my 30 gallon system and I've gotten so many questions and, and different suggestions from people on how to properly deal with cyanobacteria and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna talk a little bit about that and um, as you can see here uh, you know the cyano strands are rather long uh, you know sticking up uh, and, and this is the only real uh, area where cyano is growing uh, cyano is really not growing on any other part of the system and, and, and this is actually an indication that I need to replace uh, the carbon here which is a chemipure bag but uh, let's take a look at the at the system uh, before I do that let me just show you guys that uh, the cyano is growing mostly on that part of the system nowhere else and it needs to be dealt with immediately as soon as you see it start to grow or it can spread rather fast throughout your entire system and you want to make sure that that does not happen because once it does cyano is basically going to take over your system now this is my 30 gallon system for those of you who haven't been watching my videos everything is doing great on the system and uh, we're gonna I'm gonna do a brief uh, description after I finish discussing that uh, cyanobacteria and different ways that you can battle it now um, the system is doing awesome there's no cyanobacteria whatsoever on the sand uh, for those of you who have been following my videos here is the elegance coral which uh, shed some of the Susanthellae so it's no longer got these bright green patches but you can see it's no longer swelling up you know and it's actually open quite nicely and after doing the dip of iodine uh, it's recovering quite well and I'm expecting it to recover fully but um, I believe that uh, the cyanobacteria uh, growing in the system is due to of course the number one food source for it which is phosphates and although my system and this is very important for me to discuss although my system is testing absolutely near zero phosphates from my Salaford test kit I'm getting a, a 0 0.003 phosphates reading in my system and that is that is that is that is uh, near uh, natural seawater that is that is as much uh, phosphates that you're as you're going to find in nature and uh, the problem is that the test kit can be deceiving because as long as there is cyanobacteria in your system there's phosphates in your system so if 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 I if I see that there is some cyano growing on my on my sump on the refugium section which it is and then I go ahead and test my system of course I'm going to find uh, that there is no uh, phosphates in the system for the simple fact that the cyanobacteria is eating it faster than it can be tested in my system. The only true way for you to know if you have low phosphate levels is if you have low algae growth, meaning you don't have any hair algae or cyanobacteria, and you're still testing pretty low in your system. But if you have cyanobacteria and your tests are coming back uh, you know, negative, uh, you still have a false face in your system so that's important to uh, discuss now there are several ways for you to eradicate and battle this uh, highly nuisance type of algae which is not even an algae it's actually a bacteria you know um, and, and and commonly it gets confused a cyanobacteria uh, gets confused with blue green algae which is which can be similar blue green algae you know looks like a slimy red slime algae and so does cyanobacteria and when it grows in our systems it takes over the system and is just completely uh, you're in for a battle now one thing to keep in mind is that you know I've gotten quite a few people who come up to me and ask me you know well how do I get rid of cyanobacteria and I give them the recommendation of getting a phosphate reactor and stuff like that and then they come back the next day and they're like well I added the phosphate reactor and I still see the cyanobacteria please do understand that 
If you have cyanobacteria in your system, it can be a slow process to remove from your system. I actually had to battle cyanobacteria in my 90 gallon system for a period of like three months before I actually uh, uh, grabbed it under control. Now the majority of times cyanobacteria comes into your system via your you know live rock or a piece of coral that you add to your system and it just uh, naturally uh, you know lives in your system although it can be growing but you won't be able to detect it with the human eye but it's still in the system just waiting for that perfect moment when you overfeed your system or when there's excess nutrients lack of uh, of uh, protein skimming and the such uh, you know lack of uh, macroalgae to consume these phosphates and that's when um, you know the cyanobacteria is gonna grab hold of your system now there are several different ways that you can go about battling uh, cyanobacteria some of you who have asked me questions about it uh, have come up to me and asked me well you know I've got a system and I've got cyanobacteria and and the first thing I tell them is well can you make a video so I can take a look at your system and one of the things I discover is that there is no protein skimmer in uh, you know in, in the system so if you don't have a protein skimmer that's rule number one you need to get yourself a protein skimmer which is going to be rated for at least double your system size and this can help greatly remove some of these nutrients phosphates and all of that that the uh, cyanobacteria highly depends on you know uh, don't go cheap with a protein skimmer because it should be the heart of your filtration system and you should definitely have a decent sized protein skimmer. Now, number two, using reverse osmosis water is going to be another way that you can really, really eradicate and never even experience a cyanobacteria growth in your system. You know, it, it, it's possible for you to do that. So, you know, taking tap water and adding it to your system, mixing it with salt, you know, it, 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 tap water, even if you were to use a regular uh, filter, drinking water filter, which only contains carbon, you're only really removing some of the heavy metals and odors in the water, but you're not getting rid of phosphates. You know, when it comes to an RODI filter, the reverse osmosis membrane is going to remove some of your phosphates but what's really going to eat up the phosphates in your tap water is going to be the di resins you know so it's good to always have a combination of both r of reverse osmosis and uh di uh cartridges in your rodi filter so that's number two if you really want to battle it in a combination of a really decent protein skimmer and the use of a reverse osmosis uh, system with DI stages, uh, you're you're on the right track. Now, a lot of people come up to me and ask me about the lighting, and this is very important, guys and girls. Um, very important. Uh, the lighting does play a role in whether or not you're going to start developing cyanobacteria. And what I'm trying to tell you is, you should not attempt to lower the amount of lights that you have during the day. For example, if you are lighting your system for 12 hours a day, you know, lowering the amount of hours that you turn on your light in your system is only a short-term solution to a long-term problem. You're really only, you know, I have heard of people who turn off their lights uh, for three days at a time, for example. And uh, if you have corals, you're only really gonna do damage to the corals as well. So, uh, you know, it can certainly work and you can use this strategy to help you fight off the bacteria, but chances are it will return. So if you're going to use the three days of darkness, it is important for you to um, take the necessary steps to find a solution to the reason why this bacteria is growing. So, in other words, lowering your nutrients and phosphate levels at the same time that you give it three days of darkness is what's really going to help you uh, come through and break off uh, cyanobacteria growing in your system. Now, we were talking about the lighting, and one thing to keep in mind is that your bulbs need to be replaced often. And what happens is that when you have a 
particular bulb, let's say for example T5s, you know, after about a year of your bulbs running in your system, what happens is that the bulb starts to lose its intensity and starts giving off uh, light more in the red side of the spectrum. And when this starts to happen, it encourages growth of nuisance type algae. So it's important that um, you replace your bulbs as you should on a yearly basis, of course. You know, the bulbs could look like, like they never like they don't need to be changed because you're still seeing that same intensity but your corals and the intensity of the light after a certain amount of time has shifted more to the red side of the spectrum and will encourage uh, cyanobacteria growth so so far a combination a combination of a decent sized protein skimmer use of RODI water not tap water and changing out your bulbs when you should will help you fight off cyanobacteria and you know, uh, cyanobacteria is just a major part of, of life and, and, and process in nature. And without it, a lot of these animals will not live. But what's interesting about it is that the majority of the animals that we add into our systems do not consume this algae. The only animal that I've known to experience that has been able to consume cyanobacteria directly has been my hermit crabs. And, and even they uh, usually ignore cyanobacteria, you know, to eat something else. But um, that I know of, you know, you need to take a grab hold of your system and try to battle it off in the best way possible for you not to have um, cyanobacteria in your system. And so, you know, there, there are lots of things that come into play. But uh, the number one reason, and I state this again, is phosphates in your system so number four would be for you to get yourself a phosphate reactor and if you cannot get yourself a phosphate reactor get yourself a phosphate sponge get yourself a um some phosphate media make sure that this phosphate media is in direct flow of water from your aquarium so that it can have a chance to uh, remove it from your system and do keep in mind that you cannot just go out there and purchase uh, phosphate media and add it to your system and then expect the changes to happen immediately. Some of the phosphates, in case you did not know, adheres to the surface of your rock. It adheres to the surface of your sand. And when you neglect your system for too long of a time, the phosphates do adhere to the point that your live rock is going to be slowly leaking these uh, phosphate levels into your system, causing a continuous growth of cyanobacteria. So very important. If you're going to use a phosphate reactor, make sure that you use it initially for a period of say like a couple of weeks and then immediately replace the uh, media uh, you know in in two weeks time and and be make be sure to replace that media often in order to really get those phosphates out of your system and last but not least i highly recommend you to have a refugium now one of the reasons why i believe some of the cyanobacteria has grown in my system and we're going to move back over here is because I pruned more than half of the catomorpha from my system uh, about a week and a half of ago. And there is some uh, detritus accumulated here. And I also um, have had this bag of Chemipure for more than four months. I think it's time for me to replace that. But the shock of the system having uh, me removed so much of the catomorpha actually i believe encourage the growth of a little bit of this cyanobacteria which should not be a problem for me to solve and i'm going to uh, turn off the refugium make sure that this cyano does not spread take out the chemipure bag and replace it which by the way uh leads me to inform you guys that the next video coming up is going to be on carbon use I am going to seriously review some of these carbon um, available to you guys in the aquarium industry and give you guys my recommendation on which one is best. Also coming up is uh, glass tanks versus uh, acrylic tanks. Very important. And many more videos to come, guys. This has just been a general information video on ways to battle cyanobacteria. 
And if I missed anything, please uh, don't hesitate to um, write a comment below or ask a question on my channel or anything like that. I'd be more than glad to help you guys out. So I hope that this video has been informational for you and I hope that it has helped you out. Many more videos to come, guys. If you like my videos, guys, rate them. Um, subscribe to my videos by rating my videos. Um, more people will see the videos and uh, it encourages me to make more educational videos. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for all the support that you've given me. Many more videos to come. Uh, quickly, just wanted to show how much the growth on this um, on this clam here is just ridiculous. The growth is really, really, you know, you can see it's grown like three or four times for those of you who have been following my videos. And if you go back to uh, some of my later videos, you will see that uh, the growth is more than tripled in size. All of the corals are doing absolutely beautiful. And uh, this system is going to be uh, six months old in a few weeks. And I will be doing the last and final update on the Miracle Mud. So stay tuned for that. Uh, once again, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Many more videos to come, guys. Stay tuned. Peace.